what, what amazes me is the thread that is going through this meeting. Right from the get-go, the songs that the, the musicians are singing, the prophetic words that have come through, the, just, just what's happening, there's a, there's a thread going through this meeting. And, and uh, I was just excited as I heard uh, what God was saying through the prophetic. But I just was sitting in my office this morning and, and I just started, to, and I just wrote this down. Have you ever asked what God wants? We go to him and tell him what we want, but have we ever stopped to ask him what does he want? I believe more than anything else, God wants intimacy. He wants intimacy with us. The Word of God says in James 4, 8, it says, if you uh, take time to draw near to him, he will draw near to you. And I really want to encourage you that we've got time in this place to linger in his presence. We are in no hurry. We're not in any great urgency to finish this meeting or to get to this point or to get to that point. We want to just linger in his presence. Is that okay? How many people just want to linger in his presence? Let his presence come over us. So we just believe for God to do that. Billy Graham, speaking at a full gospel businessman's convention in Seattle, said these words, I find all over the country and through the world little prayer groups springing up everywhere. They are not organized, and I pray to God they will never be organized. They are unrelated to one another. People that 10 years ago would have made fun of you are now engaged in the same type of meetings that you are engaged in. We believe this is a move of the Spirit of God. It doesn't make headlines, but de deep underneath something has happened, and I believe it is God. How many people believe it's God? God moving by His Spirit. John Wesley was at a meeting and the power of God was evident and a lady that was a visitor to the church um, was standing there and fell under the power of God. This had never happened in their meetings before. How many people know that God's doing some things that are a little bit different to what we're accustomed to? And sometimes when things happen that we're not accustomed to, we think it's the devil. And so we blame the devil. But this woman fell under the power of God. And as she was laying on the floor, she began to laugh. And she began to roll a bit on the floor. And people came up to Mr. Wesley and said to him, Is this the devil or is it God? He said, I don't know. And this woman lay on the floor laughing and under the presence of God for quite some time. And eventually... She got up. Actually, what happened was John Wesley went and sat on a step on the platform and just waited. And all of a sudden, this woman jumped to her feet and threw her hands in the air and started to praise God. She said, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And John Wesley stood up and said, it is God. <laughs> we're, we're living in very, very interesting days. On last Sunday morning, David Blair, who's not here, I would have got him to share it himself, but I won't share it exactly the way it happened. But in the meeting last Sunday, he was standing, sitting right there or standing right there where Johnny is right now. And the power of God came all over him. And God began to put armor on him. He said, first of all, he said, he put a helmet on his head. And the helmet uh, had like shining uh, metal, and it came around his face, and there's a piece going down his nose, and it surrounded his face. Then he felt the, the uh, armor going on his chest. There was ribbons of, of metal going up and down his chest, all over his chest. Then he started to put uh, stuff on his arms and on his legs and on his feet and, and things like that. And here he is, all dressed up in this armor. And in his heart, he, he said, But God, I do not have a sword. You might remember that last uh, week I started to share on a vision that, or something that Jonathan Vickers had while we were in a prayer meeting, and I was at that prayer meeting when he, when he came out and he said, God has spoken to him and said, 
We are no longer using inferior weapons, but God has placed a sword in our hand. It's a sword of the Spirit. And David uh, said, But I have no sword, Lord. And immediately he felt a sword come into his left hand because he had hold of uh, Hazel by the right hand. And he felt this sword in his left hand. He said, But I'm a right handed person. He said, It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And, and uh, Jason, who was sitting there or somewhere there, looked over at David and was trying to indicate to Nancy and looking and we couldn't understand his sign language. Jason's up the back there right now and uh, doing the projector. And David had hold of that sword so tight that his hand began to turn blue. Amazing, isn't it? You don't seem to be so amazed. <laughs> I, I may not be explaining it properly. You may not believe in the supernatural. You may not believe in manifestations. I don't know, but he had hold of that sword so tight. And he said he doesn't know what happened or what, it, what was any more. He doesn't know any more. All he knows was that. And he told, I rang him up a couple of days later and I said, David, I said, how's the things going? He said, Neil, he said, last night, he said, I, I couldn't sleep. And I started to, and I just started to think, he said, and all of a sudden God came and clothed me again. I, I believe that it's time to get intimate with God. I believe it's time to spend time in his presence. It's time to, to let God be God and, and God do whatever he wants to do because I believe that we're living in exciting times. I believe like a sleeping giant rousing itself out of a deep sleep the church, which is the body of Christ, is beginning to stir, it's beginning to rise. Do you believe that this morning? The prophet Joel said, It shall come to pass, saith God, in the last days I shall pour out of my Spirit on all flesh. I believe that this prophecy is being fulfilled today. This outpouring of God's Spirit is touching people inside the church as well as those who would not normally consider church or rarely enter the doors of church. This prophecy said, In the last days I will pour out of my Spirit on all flesh. We're seeing a move of the Spirit, and I believe that when we're here of a morning and we're worshipping and we're praying and doing whatever we're doing, coming to the prayer meeting, there may be 20 or 30 people at a prayer meeting, there may be 100 or so people coming when we're worshipping God, it's not just that we're just here having a good time. I believe that something's happening in the atmosphere. We sing a song about the atmosphere is changing, and I honestly and sincerely believe with every fiber in my being that there is a change in the atmosphere that's going to break the strongholds of the enemy, that as we worship God, as we praise God, as we pray, as we declare the Word of God, as we seek His face, as whatever it is we're doing, we're pushing back the strongholds. We're pushing back the walls are coming down with a shout of praise. Something is happening in the atmosphere. And I believe that people that normally would not go to church, people, either, people that would not normally consider the church life at all, God is doing something in their lives. I believe that this is a work of the Spirit. God Himself, by His mighty Holy Spirit, is touching people and drawing people to Himself. Not to church, but to Himself. This has to be a move of the Spirit. Not by might, not by power, but by my Spirit. This has to be a move of the Spirit. The work of the Spirit is obviously to reveal Christ to people. To reveal Christ. I know that there are, we are hearing stories from different nations and that where people are actually seeing Jesus. I believe it's the Holy Spirit that's bringing visions and, and, and whatever it might be of the Christ. Amen. And people are seeing the Christ. Because that's the work of the Spirit. I believe that this is what, because we have the Holy Spirit inside of us, that is what... I believe that that is the major task of the Holy Spirit, is to reveal the Christ. I want to open up the Scriptures to you this morning. We're going to have a look at John chapter 16. And, and I just pray that, oh, Father, help us today. Help us today to, to, to see what you want us to see. Amen? How many people want to see what Jesus wants you to see? 
The Bible says in, in 16 uh, verse 13, it says, However, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. He will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, that is Jesus. And he will take that which is of mine and would declare it to you. All things that the Father, Father has are mine, therefore I say that he can take of mine and declare it to you. The Holy Spirit, when he comes, he's going to bring Jesus to us. In, seven, in verse 7 of 16, it says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he's going to convict the world. He's going to show and reveal the Christ. All I need is you, Lord. All I need is, is for Jesus to come and touch my life. In Revelation, let's have a quick look at Revelation. Revelation 3.20. This is Jesus speaking to the church. I, I think that we need to understand who the church really is. You see, you are the church. He's standing at your door tonight. He's, uh, today. He's standing at the door of your life today. He wants to come into your life. Revelation 3 verse 20. It says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Let me just read this again. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone, if anyone, I know that Jesus is speaking to the church here because he's speaking to the churches in Revelation. He's talking to them about what needs to change in their lives. I want to tell you this today, the Holy Spirit wants to come in his, in his own power. He wants to come and reveal to us Jesus Christ. He also wants to reveal His power. He wants to reveal His anointing. He wants to set you free. He wants you to know today that you can overcome, that you can triumph over every work of Satan, that there's nothing that's too hard for our God. And He says, I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne. What an amazing invitation that is. What a great invitation. God is saying, come on, I want you to realize my power. I want my Holy Spirit to awaken to you something that, that perhaps has been hidden through the ages. Something that perhaps negativity, failure or defeat has triumphed over in your life where you've given up, where you've said there's no hope. I want to tell you, friends, there's always hope with Jesus Christ. Never, ever give up on Jesus. Amen. He is the author and the finisher of your faith. He's the beginning and the end. He's the Alpha. He's the Omega. He is God. Amen. He is the Creator. He is the living God. Because He lives, I can face tomorrow. Because He lives, all fear is gone. Because He came and He died and rose again and He went to heaven and He sent the mighty Holy Spirit, we can have power, we can have victory in our lives to triumph over the devil. I believe that all of creation are groaning and awakening and waiting for the, for the church of the living God to wake up and rise up and stand in its place. Amen. Standing right beside Jesus, clothed with the power of God, clothed with the armor of God, clothed with the anointing of God, with a two-edged sword in your hand, with a word that comes out of your mouth that is like fire that goes before you. The fire goes before us and burns up all of our enemies. Amen. We we have the authority, we have the power, we have the anointing, we have the victory of a risen Christ. Amen. We are no longer slaves to sin. We are no longer slaves to the enemy. God has redeemed us. He has set us free. Because of His blood, hallelujah, we are washed. Because of the anointing, it breaks the yoke. Because of the anointing, the fetters are smashed. Because of the Word of God, we can go forth with power and with authority and we can declare that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. We are not just a bunch of miserable people. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
I don't know where that came from. <laughs> the power of God is in us, amen. The anointing is in us. The victory of cro the cross is in us. <laughs> Were you standing up then, Millie? <laughs> Glory to God. I can say that she's my cousin. <laughs> oh, Jesus is alive. Amen. Jesus is alive. Turn to somebody and say, Jesus is alive. Oh, he wears the victor's crown. Oh, oh praise God. Amen. <laughs> All I need is you, Jesus. Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. That is a promise of God. Today, God is standing at the door of your life. Will you let him come in? Will you allow him to come in? Will you hear his knock today? Will you open up your ears? In Hebrews chapter 2, let's have a quick look at Hebrews chapter 2. Is it all right to have a look at the Bible? <laughs> See what the Bible has to say. I love this, this verse of Scripture. It, sa it says, therefore. When you see the word therefore, what does it mean? You've got to see what it's there for. <laughs> therefore, we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. It's so easy to drift away. It's so easy to, to just float away. It's so easy to, to sort of allow the things of this world to, to sort of just get around our lives, the, the, the concerns and whatever else. I was listening to a man uh, on, on, on a tape and he was talking about the financial needs that he has. He's got some major ministry and I think he said that, that he has to raise $4,000 a minute. That's what he said. But I want to tell you, I sleep well at night. Man, that would drive me crazy. <laughs> Lord, help my faith. <laughs> Lord, help my unbelief. Amen. When I read these things, four, I think it was $4,000 a minute. He's building universities. He's building this. He's building that. He's got all these programs that are going worldwide and, and, and so forth and so from. And he said, I sleep well at night because I know unless the Lord build the house, they that build it labor in vain. And if God doesn't want to finance this thing, let it be a pack of cards and let it fall over. Ooh, shakabundi. That's faith, amen. That's faith. And friend, that's what God wants to do in our lives, where we can trust God, where we can believe in God, where we can do that. It says there that we've got to take the more earnest heed to the things that we've heard. And friend, I want to tell you that my Bible tells me that I am more than a conqueror, that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It tells me that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. It tells me that He has given me power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the works of Satan and nothing shall by any means hurt me. It tells me that He has delivered me from the spirit of fear. He has not given to me a spirit of fear, but He's given to me power, love, and a sound mind. He's given me the mighty Holy Spirit power that I might live a victorious Christian life. And I want to tell you, all of creation are groaning and they're waiting for the manifestation of the sons and the daughters of God. And it's time to wake up the sleeping giant that's on the inside of you and rise up and declare that Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord. Amen. I'm no longer a slave to slin. The slin. <laughs> slin. <laughs> the slin dust. No, the sin. The sin. <laughs> oh, glory to God. <laughs> you love him today? Oh, Jesus, we love you. I tell you what, we've got to come back to the heart of worship. Where it's all about him. We sing songs. It's not a time to say, I don't like that one. Let's come back to a heart of worship where it's all about Him. As God's Spirit moves, people will climb the hill of God. 
I believe that this is a work of the Spirit where you and I, as individuals, as God starts to move in our, in our being, there's something in us that wants to climb uh, this hill of God to get above the smog of tradition and religion, to break the traditional things that, that hold us down. People want the power of the Holy Spirit. It says in Acts 1.8, it says, You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. People want the Holy Ghost. People need the Holy Ghost. People want to hear about the Holy Spirit. They want the power of the Holy Spirit. They want more than religion. They want the miracle life of the Lord Jesus Christ that comes through the mighty baptism of the Holy Spirit. People just want God. You just want God? You just want God? Why don't you just lift up your hands? I just want you. It's all about you, Lord. I need you, Lord. People need the Lord. People need the Lord. The Holy Spirit is given to reveal the things of Christ. Only the Holy Spirit can really reveal this to us. The work of Calvary. How many people wear a cross today? May even have Jesus hanging on it. At a children's church. And this little girl came to me one Sunday morning and she showed me her cross. She was obviously a little Catholic girl. And when I looked at it, I saw on one side there was a little hand still hanging there. I said, what's that? She said, oh, she said, I had Jesus on the cross, but last week you told me that he wasn't on the cross anymore, so I pulled him off. <laughs> but I couldn't get that little hand off. <laughs> Friend, he's no longer on the cross. <laughs> Hey, he's no longer in the grave. Hallelujah. He is risen. He's risen. Glory to God. And he triumphed over hell and death. And now he wears the victor's crown. He wears the victor's crown. The Spirit of God comes to reveal Christ, the work of Calvary, the atonement that makes us one with Christ. The Holy Spirit reveals Christ to us. The Holy Spirit glorifies Jesus the Christ. I don't know if you realize it or not, but this morning we're in this house and, and there's something that we just want to linger or we just want to stay or you just want to, to uh, you know, there's something there, it's like a, an itch you can't scratch, it's like a feeling you can't understand, it's like, a, like something there that you don't really know what's going on, you just know something's going on. It's the Spirit of God that's within you that wants to glorify Jesus in your body, in your life in your praise, in you. That when we come and we lift up our hands, it's something of the Spirit. It's the Bible talks about, you know, God is seeking those who will worship Him in spirit and in truth. And there's something that begins to rise. You can't conjure up something that goes on for an hour or so, or two hours or three hours. You can't conjure that up. It's the work of the Spirit that God is taking us to. He's taking us to a place. He's wanting to take us. He's wanting to climb that hill above the smog and the tradition of man that we can see Jesus, hallelujah, with clear eyes. We can see Him high and lifted up. We can see His train filling the temple. We can see Him sitting on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. Amen. But have a look at who's sitting beside Him. It's you. Hallelujah. That's where we're seated today. In heavenly places. Far above principalities and powers and dominion and might and everything that would try to exalt itself above the knowledge of God. If God be God. Hallelujah. Climb the hill of God above the smog and the mess of life. Get find a place where you can find God. 
Where that inner man, you see there's an outward man and that outward man is perishing. But there's an inward man, glory to God. There's an inward man that's being renewed day by day. And it's this inward man on the inside of me that when we come into the house of God, I want to lift up my voice. I want to lift up my hands. I want to praise Him. I want to praise Him. I want to worship Him. Amen. You get in somewhere there in your car and you're driving along and you can start to sing the praises of God. You start to shout the glory of God. My God, dog looks at me and says, what is going on here? All of creation are waiting for you and I. They're waiting for this sleeping giant called the church to be awakened by the fire. Hallelujah, they say you shouldn't do that in church, why not? Where else can you do it? <laughs> That's what the Holy Spirit inside you is wanting to do. It's wanting to glorify the Christ. And you go out with your friends and you, and, you, and you feel like you've got a zipper on your mouth. Unzip your mouth and tell them how good God is. Amen. You know why? Because all of creation are waiting for somebody to tell them that Jesus is alive. I was the most unlikely. I got my cousin here to prove it. <laughs> I needed somebody. I needed a preacher. And friend, that's not the person behind the pulpit. Because half of them... No, I won't. <laughs> now, now, now. Thank you, Millie. <laughs> I need somebody full of the Holy Ghost with a love for Jesus Christ. Something bursting out of him, out of his innermost being will flow rivers of living water that he would come in and gush it all over me and tell me about a Christ who died for me and rose again triumphant or his and that I can live above. I was held captive to a thing that long. It was called a cigarette. <laughs> You ever think, I can't give it up. It was only that big. <clears throat> because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. That's what the Holy Spirit inside you wants to do. Wants to glorify the Christ. The Holy Spirit has no barriers. Only unbelief can hinder his flow. He's no respecter of persons. Jairus, he was a ruler of the synagogue. These are the people that were opposing Jesus. These are the people there that, that you know, that, that Jairus came to him, says, my daughter is dying. Come and heal her. Jesus didn't ask him if he was a Pentecostal. He didn't ask him if he was a Baptist or how long he'd prayed that day. He just said, by his actions, I'm coming. I thank God that, that he just came with me. I didn't know. I didn't understand. I just said, God, help me. Man, that hit heaven. <laughs> Why? Because I was sincere. I needed help. Anybody else need a bit of help? He hears our cry. He hears our prayer. Jairus came. And he starts walking with Jesus. And we know that other things started to happen. But the Bible says there that, that while he was walking, there, and they just, just prayed, ministered to a lady that had had an issue of blood, that while he was still speaking to her, Somebody came from Jairus' house and said, don't trouble the master anymore. She's dead. And he says, stop. Don't listen to that. Only believe all things are possible. Don't listen to that. Only believe. But there's another interesting thing. There was 12 disciples with him. But he only took Peter, James, and John. Why? Friend, there's thousands upon thousands of people 
And so many of them are just sitting back, sitting back, not really hearing what the Spirit of God is saying. It's time to take the wax out of our ears. It's time to have an ear, shh, massage, what do you call it? Syringe. We might have an altar call for that later on. <laughs> it's a time to hear. And I believe that Peter, James and John were hearing what the Spirit was saying. And the other ones were walking around going, huh? Yeah, they caught it later on, but right there, right then, Peter, James and John, come with me and we're going up. You're going to come and see. I want to tell you, friends, it's time to fine-tune your life. It's time to let the Spirit of God get on you and around you. It's time to commit your life to Christ and not let the things of this world grab hold of you and take you off course. It's time now to watch God and keep in God and get hold of God because I want to tell you where God wants to take you. It's going to be something so awesome. It's going to be something. I want to tell you when those three guys walked in there with Jesus and with the mother and father of that child as they pushed out all the people there that were negative and all the all the professionals, mourners and goodness knows what else. I to tell you friends it's time to get rid of the professional mourners. It's time to get rid of all the soothsayers. It's time to get rid of all those people there that don't know God that don't know what God is doing as they walked into that room. I to tell you the atmosphere is changing that atmosphere of death all of a sudden had to go out the door and now the spirit of life came into that place and oh man here's Peter. I give Goosebumps talking about it now. Glory to God. The power of God came upon those people in that room. The anointing, I want to tell you, David's little experience with armor would not be anything to what they were experiencing. <sighs> oh, spirit of life, come in. Spirit of life, come in. As they stood there, and there's the presence of God, and they looked down at that little child that was dead, died dead. And as Jesus walked over there, and as, as, as the presence of God and the atmosphere, I can't express it enough, changed in that whole room. The spirit of death went out the window. Now the spirit of life that is in Christ Jesus came in. If the same spirit that raised that little girl, if that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, if that same spirit can get on the inside of you, he will quicken your mortal body. He will raise you up. Hallelujah. And you will wear that victor's crown with Christ. And he walked over there and he said, Tabitha, Yabba <laughs> Took it by the hand. Life, those little blue eyes sprung up. Oh, she stood to her feet. Presence of God. <sighs> Anybody ever felt the anointing? Come on. Have you ever touched the anointing? Have you ever, ever, ever stepped into the room when it's full of God? Have you been in that place where the power of God just gets on? He came out with that little child. Peter, James, and John standing in awe. The other Nine. Come up. I said, what, 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 what happened? What happened? What, 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 what? If they would have been me, I would have just said, you should have been there. You should have been there. And friend, I want to tell you that that invitation we've heard today, come. That invitation is to everybody. Not just to this one or to that one. But in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. On all flesh. I'm not even going to look at the time because I don't care. I do, but I don't. Hura <laughs> shakabunda Luke 10. How many people love this book? It is the book of life for them. 
is the Holy Ghost book. It's written by the Holy Ghost. It's written by the Holy Ghost. So he knows all about it. Seventeen. Then the seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Friend, we need to see Satan fall. Because too many of us have got Satan high and lifted up. We've got Satan so big and so monstrous that we can't break through. I ought to tell you, he's a defeated foe. He's on his belly eating dust all the days of his life. He's like a, like a miserable worm. And he's under your feet. I saw Satan fall. Oh, glory. Can you see Satan falling? Can you see him screaming? Can you see Yeah! It's Jesus. Get out of here! Friend, that's the word you and I got to say many times. Get out here! Get out, you foul, filthy mongrel. I saw Satan fall like lightning. Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Hallelujah. Rejoice greatly. Oh, hallelujah. Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. Matthew 6.33 says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Every promise that I've ever made, every promise from the table of contents <laughs> to the whatever that is. No, the, what is it? Concordance. Every promise that's written in there, if you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things shall be added unto you. All of these things shall be added unto you. All of these things shall be added unto you. All of them. All of them, glory to God. Oh, you got a crazy preacher here, but anyhow. Not some of them. Not just the Baptist bits. But every bit. Not just the Pentecostal bit. But every bit. Every, every bit shall be added unto you. Father, it's all about Jesus. It's all about Him. And Father, I pray that, that you will open up heaven to us and let your glory come down Father we long for that day when we can't even minister because the Holy Ghost is so thick I've seen video clips of Reinhard Bonke, Bonke in Africa thousands upon thousands of people just falling under the power of God in mass Father we're hungry for a move of your spirit. If you're hungry for a move of the spirit of God, lift up your hands. Better still stand to your feet. If you're hungry for a move of God, would you dare ask Jesus, what can I do for you? We, we need some children's church workers at the moment. I'm so glad that a long time ago, 45 years ago, as I was standing and the anointing of God touched me, and I was never the same. And I remember a couple of, might have been a couple of days or a week, I just stood 
Yeah, I was in the, at my big, I had a couple of acres and I stand out in the paddock. And I lifted my heart. See, friend, it's, it's not just words, it's your heart. You know what I'm talking about? I lifted my heart. And I, I was just so thankful and caught up in what God had, how God had touched me. And I said, God, what can I do for you? And he said to me, it was as clear as bell, go off and down the street and gather the children. I thought, no, why don't, why don't I get a Reinhard Bonnke ministry? Why don't you just tell me to go into a hospital and everybody will get healed or something big? Snotty nosed little kids. Get the kids. So we did. And within two or three weeks, we had 70 children in our yard. As a result of that, Clark offered me a job as a children's church pastor. Within 18 months, we had 600 children in children's church. In the midst of that, all of a sudden, they said, Would somebody, we need somebody to go to the Sunshine Coast. Who will we send? Somebody said, Neil. I said, don't be so stupid. I can't organize a good dog fight. But we went. Friend, it always starts with, God, what can I do for you? Not what can you do for me. We've had been there, we've done all that, and praise God, he answers us, amen? But what can I do for you? You might be amazed what God will say to you. Amen? What are we going to sing up there, you anointed people? Eh? Why don't we, we will rise? How many people? No, you got. Well, first of all, I'm going to ask you how many people need a, an ear wash out? <laughs> Might sound a bit silly, but I think that's a God thing. So we can hear clearly. How many people just want more of God? Just want God. Here I am, Lord. How many people want to rise up? To rise up. To rise up. Holy Ghost has been on you for a long time this morning, hasn't he? Do a big, big time, my brother. Big time for you this morning, my brother. This is what it's all about, friends. This is what it's all about. You might say, I don't have to go out front. No, you don't. You don't have to be one of the three either. <laughs> Spirit of God. The Rabba Shate, Ribi Banda, the Dabanda, the Kiribi Bai, the Bunda, the Divi Rai, the Banda. Vi bai bai babor raban di 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 bi bi ban de de kuri ban do de de balara ran do de di bi bai. 